Hi, it's Karen the Weekend Craftaholic and if you saw my recent craft haul video you'll know that I finally got my hands on these. So I have been dying to try these ever since I saw Vicky Booten. Now she's been doing heaps of YouTube videos during isolation and lockdown so check that out if you've not come across it. But I've been wanting to try these powdered pigment sets for a while and that's because I see Missy Widden use the Lindy's ones all the time. I definitely can't get those here in Australia but um, I'm hoping these are going to be very similar in terms of the overall effect and what I want to do today is start playing with this and show you some of the effects so if you've seen Vicky Booten you'll know she always keeps like little gift tags so I've created my own I've just cut these out on my Cricut um, and on thick watercolor it's 300 gsm watercolor paper and I'm just going to make myself a little swatch drink. So this is the fun that I'm going to have today. So I've already made notes of what I want to do on each of them. And the different mediums that I want to try them with as well. Just so that I've got a recollection then when I turn them over. And I'm going to get all of these beautiful effects that I'm going to be able to look back on and think, okay, I want to try that. Now there's only a couple of them I prepared in advance. And that's because I wanted to try it with gesso and also with modeling paste. So they're drying as we speak. Let's get it out of the package. Now I got this from Kitaholics Kits. It was just over 20 Australian dollars for the set. And you can see here, it says you can use with different mixed mediums. So if on the back, you can see the different colors that we've got. And we can obviously mix those as well to make some other colors. And it does say here, use with watercolors, paints, gesso, out crayons and more. So I have got a big selection of other products that I want to try it with. So first of all, let's have a look at them. They've got all the names at the bottom. This is Sugared Strawberry. And yes, they've all got these little covers on. So let's just take all of these off to begin with. Okay, so now I've got all of those lids off. I am gonna do some color swatching. Start with all of the greens. And I'm gonna apply them with water but then I also want to apply water and then just sprinkle a bit on as well and see what the effect looks like when it spreads out. So I will do these colour swatching and then put you on fast forward. If you've never done colour swatching before it's definitely something that I would recommend you do whether it's with inks, markers, paints, pigment powders such as these. It really is any way to find out what the true colour is going to be like once it's dried. Quite often I hear the Lindy's powders dry a lot fainter than they look in the, in the pot so this is why I'm keen to do this here as well. Now if you've seen my video, it's a very old one, I should really redo it. Um, I have like a, um, an inventory for all my craft supplies and that's something that I take with me when I'm at the shop, so if I'm ordering stuff online. Because when it comes to colours, you know, inks and markers and paints and so on, you, you it's quite easy to forget which ones you've got and which ones you need because there's usually a, a vast array of different ones you can buy. And of course you can do colour swatching on different background coloured papers as well because I'm sure they look completely different on say black cardstock. The next technique I'm going to do is see how well they mix with alcohol inks. These are just range of alcohol inks and as you can see they work very very well with those. All pastels. This is something I don't use a lot of but I did have a look around my craft room and just try to see what other mixed media products I could use. This was a bit of a no-brainer, acrylic paint, and you can see there as well how that came out. And then with watercolour, I've done two different ones. I've done wet on wet as well as wet on dry. Now I'm going to show you at the end of this and talk a little bit more about the um, effects once they're dried. But this is just me very quickly going through and trying these. Now I did have a bit of a mistake with that. The pot just came out completely, so you may see that in a blooper video. Um, but moving on to Nouveau Glacier Paste, I absolutely love these and this is something I was really keen to try because I did see Vicky Booten do this with some of uh, Creative FX pots and I thought I would try the same as well and it did actually completely change the colour of it, it was amazing. In terms of modelling paste, yeah that's, that's another classic way we can use it as we do with gesso just to try and get some dimension and I just wanted to see in this particular experiment what would happen if I overloaded it and went too much and, and whether or not I'd get that brown colour because I really wanted to see how well these pigment powders played together as well as with other media types. So when it comes to gesso I did two different ones, I did with clear gesso and white gesso and I was just using my little paper towel there just to see what it did if it would give some some kind of textured effect. 
So the results of all of my little playing around with my experiments is finished. All of the water colour paper is now dry and you can see I've now attached all of these little tags with a split ring. So this is a perfect way of keeping them on my pegboard and then I've got all of these examples if ever I need to look at them. So let's have a quick flip through. So you can see I've just made myself a little front cover here as well, just letting me know which products I've used, the Vicky Bouton Powered Pigment Sets and what, I'm, what the aim of this little gift tag flip album is, which is mixed media effects. And I've also just made a note of the paper I use, which is 300 GSM watercolor paper. Okay, so first of all, I have got the colour swatches, as you can see here. And if you remember, we added them with water and then we also just added the sprinkle powder as well. So I've got three sets of those. And I've just made quick notes on the back of these are the greens. I haven't yet made notes of the specific colours. As you can see here, they're all on the bottom, but I will do that next. Okay, so then this is the blue, which I thought was actually purple when I looked at it in the tub, but that's definitely a blue. And then the two different shades of pink. And then finally we have the red, the orange and the yellow as well. I absolutely love the yellow. Looks really brash and bold on here, but on the paper it looks really great effect, nice and cool. All right, so first off we had the first attempt, which was with the alcohol inks, if you remember. So this was just putting the pigment powders down, spritzing them with some water, and then seeing how they worked with the alcohol inks. And you see, it works really well. You have this nice little grainy effect. They don't smoosh at all. So I think that's definitely a technique I would try again. This next technique here, I left the pigment powders as they sprinkled out in powder form and then you can see on the back we've got the green and that was with the oil pastels so they work absolutely well blending with the oil pastels the next one was acrylic paint yep yeah, I'm just checking on the back and again I kind of left them in this pigment format and and it's been a few days since this was done I've let them dry and you see even though now I'm adding a spritz of water a few days later it is still blending these really really nicely as you can see so um, good to know you can go back after the event and still make some changes with those pigment inks if you like okay this next one look at this deep blue color it's absolutely stunning this was done with a distressed crayon so I'd use the green distressed crayons and then mix them in with the blue this one I absolutely love. What's this? This is with the gelatos. So I'd used a tone on tone effect with this, a similar colour gelato to the powder. And I really love again that effect. And look at this one, it's absolutely stunning. So this is the wet on dry with watercolour. The paper was dry, but the pigment powders were wet. So I'd got the powdered pigments, wet them before applying onto the dry watercolour paper. You can see how vibrant those colours are. They remind me of the Catherine Pooler inks really. There's so much pigment in them. Now this one was wet on wet. So you can see I'd mix them both off the surface. I'd put a layer of water on the watercolour card and then added that on. So you can see the difference if you use wet or dry as your base on your paper. The yellow one, now this was with clear gesso. Just got to remind myself. And again, that looks absolutely stunning, as you can see. And this one was with the white gelatos. And you see, that's a really good effect. That's one where I actually just used my paper towel and dabbed off, because I just wanted to get an idea again of what that effect would be like smeared off. And then we come to the interesting ones. These are absolutely my favourites. This is the first one we did, remember, with the creative effects. This was with the silver one. And then I just put the silver down and then I put the powdered pigment on top and then mixed it in. So it gives that, gives that really good textured effect where you still get the silver but you also get some of that pink coming through. It's an absolutely gorgeous shine. I'm hoping you can see the effect here as I turn this around. And then look at this one. So this one, believe it or not, was exactly the same process and same colours as this one. But what I'd done is mix them on the glass media mat and then applied them in one go. So again, you still get the pink, you still get the silver, but to get this crinkle effect, I used my heat gun. So I just warmed it up and it's almost like plastic. It almost 
feels like it was melting plastic when it was burning with the heat gun and I absolutely love that effect as well um, from for a mixed media project you imagine it would be grey in a gold colour as well or a bronze and then this is at my absolute favourite so this was with the Nouveau Glaze now the glaze on here let me just grab it for you can you believe was this colour originally and I'd mixed it again with the pink but I feel like most of that green pigment in the mousse is gone we've obviously still got that gorgeous sparkle effect but now we've got a completely different colour of mousse so it almost feels like I don't need to buy any more of the mousse I'll be honest I feel next time round I will just use the clear and in fact I could probably even use the glimmer paste for this and if I glimmer paste because that's a clear one but we know that it will absolutely cover up this as well um, and this is the glassier paste so um, absolutely love the effect of that and knowing that I can really stretch this supply as well and use nine different colours on it now now this one I wanted a bit of an oldie worldie effect so I did use a stencil with the modelling paste and then we just um, applied lots of water then the powders mix them in and I, I guess what I was trying to achieve here was I wanted to try and see so you know sometimes when you use paints and it goes brown because the colors don't mix well I wanted to see if that would actually happen I didn't know if like alcohol inks where they resist themselves you can still get that nice sharp differentiation of color where sometimes when you're blending um, other inks and so on they go brown so I feel like you do kind of get that brown effect but in this case you know it's not too bad I can I kind of like it actually I think it works well with this old-fashioned kind of stencil with modeling paste look but um, yeah it was definitely a good lesson for me knowing that there are limits to pushing these you can't mix too many of them I think I'd use the green the red the yellow so they did absolutely start to blend into a brown so bear that in mind and that is it that's my little swatch so you can see yeah, we actually did 16 different techniques and with this one product so absolutely unbelievable i love the way it reacts and plays with all these other products you've really got to try it for yourself it was a lot of fun i had a couple of hours in the craft room playing with this and then i left it a day or two just to dry off as well so i'd absolutely encourage you to get these um they up uh, they are without a doubt very versatile and certainly from a cost point of view for 20 Australian dollars for these nine inks knowing how far they will stretch from other products is definitely a win for me so if you've got these I'd love to hear from you leave a comment below on how you're finding them uh, if you've got any questions about any of my little experiments please also leave a comment but otherwise have a great crafting weekend